Hey, what's up? I'm Jason, and today we're going to talk about how to become a better game developer. This video is primarily going to be about how to learn with some tips for beginners and then some tips for more advanced developers who are maybe working a full-time job. Before we get going, though, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, please just hit the share button and go share it on whatever things you use or don't use. YouTube really likes that. I really like it, and it really does help. Um, if you really don't want to share, then I guess just hit the like button and leave a comment or something. Anyway, thanks again. Thanks to everybody on Patreon as well. You guys really do help. I appreciate it a lot. And let's just get started. Let's begin with some beginner tips. So a lot of beginners start off developing games and really have no idea what to do. When I started off, I had no idea what to do. I went straight to the bookstore that was around, found the only book that I could find on Unity, read through the entire thing and still really had no idea what to do. So when I did it, I kind of went the wrong way. And I want to talk about that real quickly and what I would recommend instead. So when I began with Unity development, I'd already done game development in Unreal and custom engines before, but I'd never done anything in Unity. And I dove in with the plan of let's make this game. We had a design, we had a, or at least a rough design, an idea of what we were going to build. And we were just going to go in and build that game first project. Not what I would recommend. People ask me about this a lot. Should I just go in and start building my first project? I want to make games. I've never made games before or maybe I've made games in something else like you have. Um, no, don't, don't build the, the big game first. Don't build the one-year project or the six-month project or whatever it is, the five-year project. Don't start there. Start with simple projects. Start with little things that you can do in one to two weeks. If it sounds like it's going to take two weeks, cut it in half and then it'll probably really take two weeks because everybody's terrible at estimating. But cut down the scope of your games and start them often. Start building games quickly. So you want to, now when I say that, I don't want you to just like begin, make part of a game and then stop because it took two weeks. But you want to get to the point where you get that core gameplay loop done and then move on to the next game and then move on to the next game and move on to the next game and do this maybe I used to say like five times, I would go with like a dozen. Do, do it 12 times. Make a bunch of these little games as practice. Now, you might think like, hey, I'm never getting anything done. I'm never finishing a game or building the thing that I really wanna do. What you're doing is learning. This is literally the fastest way that I know of to learn. You start and build a lot of projects. You're gonna notice that the first time that you do the thing, like whatever the system is that you're implementing into a game, it's gonna be slow going to take you a long time, especially if you're very new to programming. The second time you do it, it's probably going to be very slow again. Third time might be a little bit slower or a little bit faster, but by, you know, the 30th time you do a thing, it's just like anything else. It becomes second nature. You don't even realize you're doing it. The code just kind of appears. You think it and the code shows up and that's where you want to get to. And you only get there from lots and lots of practice. Just getting in there, building up that memory of like, hey, this is how I do these things. It's almost like muscle memory, but it's in your brain, right? It's just game developer memory. So aside from starting up a lot of projects, there are a couple other things I would recommend. And that's uh, going to meetups and user groups and talking to other developers, watching and seeing what they're learning and just kind of getting an idea of the types of things that the developers nowadays are interested in learning about. So then make sure that you're learning the right things. You don't want to be learning old technologies that are all deprecated and going away or on their way out or just completely gone, right? You don't want to accidentally be learning the really old stuff. So you want to make sure that you're keeping up to date with people and you don't have to know everything. Don't expect to know everything or to know exactly what's right, but just talk to people and ask them, say, hey, you know, I'm getting started in this. This is the specific thing that I'm interested in. If you have a thing that you're interested in, make sure that you mention that. And then ask them, what, what, what should I study you know, based on this interest? If I'm into you know, 3D art and 3D graphic stuff, maybe I should learn about the new shader system. If I'm into um, bigger architecture stuff, I probably should get better at design patterns and even knowing what those are. There are a lot of things that you can pick up just by giving a little bit of information about what it is that you're interested in and where your end goal is too. Now, another thing you can do if you're just getting started is find some good courses. There are a lot of them out there. I've got some of my own. There are lots on Udemy, and then there are a ton of free YouTube courses. I've got um, one that I will make sure to link or put in a card somewhere so you can see to just get started if you're really, really new. But there are courses on all kinds of different Unity or other game development engines that you can 
take and learn. And I found that a lot of the time those work really well because they're guided and structured and they kind of take you through like step by step. Here's the thing to learn. Here's why we're going to learn it. And here's what we're going to learn and how, how it works and how you can integrate it into your projects. Of course, it's always a big variety. Can't vouch for any specific one, but um, I would definitely check them out. It's something that I do all the time when I want to learn new things. So if I want to figure out almost anything that's more advanced and complex, I will usually, first I'll jump to YouTube. I'll go through a couple of videos, see if I can figure it out right there. If it's not very obvious and apparent, I'll jump over to finding out what the best courses are available for it. And then I will grab one of those and kind of force myself to go through it. Usually if I get a course, I kind of, um, I feel the pressure on myself to get it done and learn the stuff that's in there. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but most of the time it's really great and uh, I learn a lot. But I would highly recommend going with the uh, YouTube free stuff first though because there's a lot of it out there. There's a ton of content. There's also the beginner courses on the Unity site. Those can work great too. You can cover all kinds of different things, lots of subjects in there. All right, now I want to dive into some tips for more advanced developers who are maybe working a full-time job or working contract or something. People who know how to build a Unity game and have built Unity games before. How do you get better? How do you learn more? The first thing that I like to do is just some intentional, deliberate practice. Find something that you're very interested in and focus on it. So whatever that subject is, if it's you know, shader development, um, testing, design patterns, um, some new feature, 2D feature, 3D feature, networking, figure out what that thing is and plan to practice it. Now, I like to practice with a technique that I stole from my buddy Chris, where just take an hour a day and slot that time just for practice work. So in that hour, I will work on a tutorial or some other practice thing, maybe experimenting or learning or reading or whatever it is. Right now, I'm actually going through a tutorial on making an Overwatch uh, Reinhardt shield. Thought it was pretty cool. And it's somewhat relevant to stuff that I'm going to be doing, which is the next part. Make sure that you keep the learning relevant to things that you're actually going to use. Don't go out and try to learn a bunch of things that you're never going to use because if you're like me, you'll probably forget them. Now, maybe you're magical and you can remember everything that you've learned. In that case, my tips are probably totally useless for you. But in my case, if I learn things and don't use them ever, I tend to forget them. And it happens relatively quick. Could be like a week later, I've forgotten it. And then I learn it again. And a week later, I've forgotten it. Learn it again. And a month later, I've forgotten it. You get the idea. So make sure that you are learning things that you have some short-term implementation plan for at least if you're gonna dive in deeply. For the wider spectrum stuff, like learning about things that exist, I like to just go through blog posts and podcasts and stuff like that to get an idea of like what's out there that I should know about that maybe I could learn about. But when I really wanna dive in and make sure that it's something that I'm gonna use, don't go out and just learn something that you're never gonna use or not gonna use anytime soon. And a good example of that for me was unit testing. So about it was about a year ago, I decided that um, I was going to get better at unit testing in video games. I'd done a lot of unit testing outside of game development and web stuff and a bunch of game development, but never really mixed the unit testing and game development together. I always found it to be kind of a pain and not something that I liked to do. Like It felt like a lot of extra work and I was struggling with it. So I intentionally decided, hey, for the next month, I'm going to force myself to write unit tests for everything that makes sense to write unit tests for. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna go test first on as much stuff as possible and get comfortable with it. Um, that lasted the first month and it slowed down a little bit after that. Like I didn't start, didn't keep doing it in everything, but I found that I was starting to write unit tests all the time because with that one month of kind of forcing myself to write tests, I got a whole lot better at it. I got a lot more comfortable at it and a whole lot faster at it, which was probably the biggest thing. It got to the point where writing a test and testing my code was faster than writing the code and running the game to play and test the code. So forcing yourself to do this testing, or not testing, but the practice can really have a big payoff. Now, like it's a year later and I'm addicted to unit testing and I test almost everything. It works out great and I'm seeing huge payoffs for it. But if I hadn't forced myself to do it for a while, it wouldn't have happened. If I'd done what I've done before, or what a lot of people do where they just say like, hey, I'm gonna learn it one day, 
I'll go write a couple of tests and then maybe I'll think about how I can implement this sometime. Yeah, I'll keep thinking about it and think about it. Maybe add a test here or there. Um, if I'd done that, I never would have done it. In fact, I did that a couple of times before I just went in, forced myself and it worked. So I'd highly recommend that you do something similar. Again, not necessarily for unit testing, but whatever the thing is that you want to learn. Once you kind of have an idea of it, if you can build it into your daily workflow and you know, into your patterns, something that you can start using a little bit every day, that's awesome. Now, of course, don't go overboard and use it where it doesn't fit, whatever the thing that you're learning. But um, if it fits in there and you can use it and make it into a habit and a pattern, it'll go a long way. Now, another thing we can do is, well, another thing that's quite a bit harder is to just talk to other developers. Um, I like to do this a lot, but I still struggle with it sometimes, like just talking to random developers. I, I, it can totally be stressful, right? Like you don't know what other people know. You don't know what you know, and it, it can get... Developers tend to be introverted, right? Let's just put, put it like that. Developers a lot of the time don't like to talk to each other. They don't like to talk to strangers or other people too often. But if you can get in with a small group of other developers that you feel comfortable with, where you're okay just sharing info, you're nice to each other, you work well together, um, it can go a long way. Now, this could be anything from a, a meetup or just a group of friends on Skype or Discord. Now, if you're working a full-time job, those developers should be your coworkers, ideally. So you can show your stuff to your coworkers, show them what you're learning, and get a little bit of advice from them. But the biggest part is to share your code with other developers. And this part is going to seem probably a little bit scary to people. But if you don't share what you're building with people, you're never going to get feedback. If you just write code in a vacuum, you never show it to anybody, you're not going to get, you might get a little bit better at it, but you're not going to get better at it at the same speed that you would if you're getting constant live feedback or any feedback on your code. And the feedback is going to be sometimes bad. It'll be like, hey, that was a bad thing. You shouldn't have done that. And this is why. Now, if you take it the right way, you know, sometimes it depends on how the message is delivered. But if the message is delivered okay and you understand the point that, hey, this is bad and this is why, then you you should start to pick it up. You'll learn like, hey, okay, this isn't the way to do this. There's another way to do it that's a little bit better. And you're going to pick that up over and over and over if you're constantly sharing your code and getting feedback. If you're sharing your code and everybody says, hey, looks good, it's fine, um, they're, they're lying, right? Like they're, they're either not taking a close enough look at your code or they don't feel comfortable commenting on your code, which is possible, um, or they just perhaps they don't see the issues. But a lot of the time, people just don't feel comfortable calling out issues in others' code. And that all comes with, yeah, that level of comfort, the talking to people, being friendly with them and being friends with them. It's a lot easier to give feedback to your friend on, hey, um, maybe you should change this part and this part than it is to a random stranger or a coworker that you just kind of see every now and then and don't really talk to or get along with, right? So make sure that you're talking to them build up these relationships and then share your code and have them check your code and get feedback. And don't just get feedback, react to the feedback, respond to it, take it in and use it. And if people ask you for feedback on their code, do it. Like if you're not right in the middle of something, you're not concentrating on a problem, then stop, go look at their thing and give them honest feedback. Tell them if something's named bad, whatever, call it named bad. But look at the more important issues, the bigger architectural things. Look at ways that maybe they have missed or op opportunities that they've missed to maybe genericize things or simplify things or just make them better or faster. Um, look for parts of code that aren't easy to understand and explain those to them. And when you're sharing your code, try to think about the code in a way that um, like as, as if it's coming from somebody else. So imagine somebody else gave you this code. If you looked right at it, had no idea what it was, the variables were... You know, whatever they are now, would you be able to tell what this is instantly? How long would it take you to tell what it is? Make sure that that time is very short. Your code should ideally be very self-documenting and very easy to understand. doesn't always happen. I write code that I can't understand sometimes. But the goal is to write code that everybody can understand, 
just by looking at it and reading at it. They may not know exactly how it works, but they'll know what it's doing and ideally why it's doing what it's doing. So another step for this, if you can't just share your code, is code reviews. And that's kind of what I was talking about there, where you could just share your code and share it on screen with somebody, or you could maybe submit it with a code review tool if you've got one, or a code review system if you've got one. And if you've never used code reviews before, it's it's essentially a system where you submit your code, somebody, usually a lead or somebody who's got a little bit more experience. Sometimes it's just um, equal level developers, though, who are all kind of on the same footing. And they'll go in and review the code. They'll check it out, look for issues, report those back, and then submit that. And then a lot of the time that stops a commit. Like it, you can't even commit until the code review is there. Or you can't commit into the main branch. Um, sometimes that's not the case. A lot of the time, too, code reviews are... Um, they vary a lot from place to place. That's all I want to say. Now, the, the last tip that I have for learning fast as a developer is one that I've probably given a couple times before, um, but it's just because I've seen it work so well, and that is mob programming. So mob programming is a lot like pair programming. If you've ever seen pair programming, it's just two developers working side by side, one keyboard, one, one computer switching back and forth who's on the keyboard and working on a problem together. It can work out great if the pair is somewhat equally level. Otherwise, it ends up being a lot of one person doing the job. But if everybody is somewhat on equal footing, you end up with a pretty good system there. But with mob programming, you take that and you just kind of build on it and make it better. So it's you take the pair, add another person, or maybe add another two or three people. And then you start swapping who's on the keyboard and you're all working on one problem together. That's kind of the biggest point here is that you're all working on this one thing. You're solving this one problem and you're solving it in the best possible way because now you have, instead of one person doing it at however they are in the day, you know, maybe it's their low point in their day, it's their worst code of the day, but you got two other people in there that are still going strong. The code is, I like my, my beautiful finger chart, the code quality level is going to get pulled up and it constantly gets pulled up and you get a lot of other benefits, not just the code quality going up, but everybody is learning in, in a mob programming scenario. Almost everybody is learning almost all of the time. We're constantly picking up little tips and pieces of advice from each other. Our architecture gets better, design gets better, the code gets better, and I'd say, in general, everything gets better. If you're interested in mob programming, by the way, um, my buddy Chris has a podcast slash YouTube channel, Mob Mentality Show. I'll put a link down below. I highly recommend you go check it out and just kind of learn and see what it is that they do. If you see what they do in real life, it's it's amazing. It's crazy stuff. When they talk about it and explain it, you can, I think, kind of understand how it works and how you can... You know, maybe steal some of those ideas for your own scenario. Anyway, after you go check out his channel and subscribe to him, make sure that you have uh, shared this video, right? You already shared it, right? I'm sure you did. Anyway, <laughs> I'll shut up now. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, goodbye. Keep learning. Get better at coding. That's what I'm trying to do.